We just wrapped up our second grade year and I wanted to share with you guys our map. We use Horizons map and this is our third year to use this with my oldest daughter. I kind of wanted to tell you the things we liked about it, the things we didn't like about it, and I also wanted to just give you a look inside so you could see what it was like. I'm Jamie and this is Simply Learning Together where I like to share all kinds of things about our homeschool, whether that's activities that we do or whether it's the curriculum that we're using and how it's working for us. I'm so glad you're here. I love talking about curriculum. Today we're going to be looking at Horizons 2. I absolutely love it for my oldest daughter. I tried using Horizons with my second daughter and it did not work as well. It just proves how unique children are. There is a video that I made on that and I can link it for you in the description if you are interested. So we no longer use Horizons for my second daughter. Let's first talk about the things that I love about Horizons. I love how easy Horizons is to follow. If you open up the workbook, when you see the steps here, Boom, there's no fluff, there's nothing to skip around, there's no paragraphs to read, the instructions are there, and you do the work. And I really love that about it. Um, it makes it very easy to do it independently. So if I need to be working with another child, I can briefly look over what's coming in the workbook, and my daughter can take it on her own and do it. I also love that if we're getting kind of bored by something, it's so easy for me to look at the skill and add some activities to kind of get out of the book and be hands-on and move around the room. And I shared that when my kindergartner was using this, so you can kind of see how we do that and I'll link that below. And I also do it with my second graders. Sometimes you come across problems where there's just a whole bunch and so you can break it up and do little activities. I share a lot of those on Instagram if you follow me there. I love how easy it is to do that. I'm not feeling like I have bogged down by the activities that the book provides me. So that's something that I really enjoy. One of the other things I like about Horizons, it is a spiral review. To me, that means you can't forget what you learned. It's going to come up later. And so I really like that she gets that practice in all those different skills all the time. So now let's talk a little bit about things I don't like about the program. You know, I wish there was a curriculum that was just perfect for what I need. And I've learned over the years that that's really non-existent. You have to find something that works for you and then you have to adjust it so that it works even better for you. So if you're looking for something that's gonna be perfect for you every single day, I don't think you're gonna find it. But if you can find what feels good to you and make it work for your family, you're gonna end up being much happier. And that's what Horizons is for us, for my oldest daughter. But to give you a look at some of the things that don't really work for us, I will do that now. The first thing is, very quickly, I realized there are so many problems in this book. And what I mean by that is, when you get to a section, sometimes they want you to do 15 addition problems. I think that is unnecessary. I don't think my child needs to practice 15 addition problems every single day. And because it's a spiral program, that kind of thing is constantly coming up. So you can see here if I pull up a page like this. And even though it's backwards, you can see there's tons of problems here, lots of problems here, lots of problems here. And it took me a while to figure out what to do about that. The solution is very simple. You just don't do them all. <laughs> And that was a game changer. When I figured that out, it made math so much easier. Now, if your child needs the extra practice, you definitely want to do as many as it takes so that they can feel comfortable doing that skill. But if they have it down, there's no need to do it so many times. Um, I also have a video on this. I'm very passionate about it. I will link that below. But you don't need to do all the problems, and we never do. As a homeschool mom, I feel very thankful that I can go and I can take them out and I can add some in, whatever I need to do. It's very easy to work around that. Another thing about Horizons that is a little tricky for me is it is very fast paced. The spiral review kind of helps in that situation, but it's hard for me to kind of keep up with it. It's very advanced. So depending on your child, that could be a good thing or it could be something that can cause some conflict when you're trying to do your schoolwork. I actually taught fifth grade math in the classroom and in this second grade math book, we were doing things in this book that 
I was teaching my fifth graders at the end of the school year. So there were times when I opened it and I was like, is this for real? <laughs> but, um, you know, I, it was easy for me to say, okay, this does not have to be totally mastered. We can just kind of touch on this and it'll come up in the later years. Almost every time I worry about teaching her a new concept, thinking it's too advanced for her age level, she gets super excited once she knows it. So, um, you know, it just depends on the kid, but that is something that's hard for me. The other comment I wanted to share about Horizons is the teacher's guide. All three years, I have probably opened up the teacher guide like a handful of times, and that includes counting them all together. <laughs> It is nice and crisp and beautiful because it doesn't get used. I think I bought it because I knew the math was gonna be a little bit harder, and so I didn't wanna to have to sit there and grade it all by myself. But then when I realized we didn't have to do all those problems, we could just do a couple, well, then I just did those in my head. So I never used it. Now, I will tell you, and I'll show you this when I do a look through, it does give you ideas of what you can do to teach the topics and introduce them. I never use it. There are worksheets in the back of the teacher's guide. I've, I couldn't even tell you what they look like. I've, I've never looked at them. We've never used them. There were two or three times that I had to, I looked at a section and I thought, what in the world is she supposed to do here? And I had to pull out the teacher book and read the little description. And then it never came up again. So it was something that was so small um, and probably unnecessary. <laughs> that, you know, it just, I don't think the teacher guide is really that great. So if you're looking to save some money, maybe you can do it without it. Something for to consider as you're budgeting for your upcoming year. However, if you like the guidance of somebody giving you ideas of what to do, and I'll show you that here in a minute, I do think it could be helpful. It gives you a list of materials to use, um, some things that you can do for the different sections. For some people it might be great, for others it might be useless. You know you, you know what works best in your house, that way you can make the decision for yourself for that. Okay, so let's take a look inside the books. I'm just going to breeze through the workbooks so you can kind of get an idea of what the math looks like for level two, and then I'm going to show you the teacher's guide, a lesson so you can see how that's set up, and I'll show you some of the worksheets in the back if you're interested in that. I'm gonna start by showing you book one. I plan to show you the beginning, where it's at in the middle, and kind of where it's at at the end so you can see the different skills that are practiced. You'll just have to look past the writing in here. One thing I've noticed about Horizons is it starts with a ton of reviews. So if you can kind of see what they're doing, I mean, we're practicing tally marks, um, things, here's ordinal numbers, putting numbers in order, here's place value. If I move to lesson 44, here we are doing some of these other skills, fat families, getting ready for estimation. Let me go a couple pages so you can just see where it's at and then I'll flip to the back of this book and this book does introduce multiplication which I was nervous at first but uh, find you some skip counting songs that's what worked for us made that a breeze so this these are the last lessons in book one when I'm looking at curriculum, I kind of like to see what's in the books. How advanced is it? How easy is it? What's it going to look like for my child? So that's kind of why I'm showing you that. And you can also see how we box the ones that we do. And sometimes we skip full sections completely. So you get to make it work for your kiddo. That was book one. And now let's take a look at book two. Now book two is just gonna keep on going with wherever you finished off. Here's the first few pages of book two. And then we can jump to the middle of book two. And now uh, you can see it does introduce algebra in second grade. That was a shock to me. I almost didn't even do it, but turned out my daughter loved it. So you know what your kid would like. You can decide from there. Um, we're talking ratios and um, measuring, adding decimals came up, more multiplication, 
So this is the middle of book two to give you an idea. Lots of charts in book two, I realize that as well. Roman numerals. And then if we move to the back, where it's at here, lots of reviews still, but then it's gonna throw in new topics. So like this, putting things on a graph, fractions. A map came up a time or two in the back. Conversions. Temperature. And uh, area and volume also came up. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that the closer we got to the end, the more I realized how advanced this stuff was. So I kind of just touched on them briefly instead of doing every single problem in the back. What, you know, we'd look at something new and then I'd say, okay, now I'll go to this page because all of this is review. So we'd go a few pages and we'd, I'd say, okay, let's take a look at this. This is something new. And now go to page 113. So we were constantly skipping around, looking at the new skills, practicing them, but I wasn't worried about her actually mastering them. The last thing I wanna show you is a peek inside the teacher's guide. Here's a readiness evaluation. We did not do that. It also has a scope and sequence for the year. Okay, so let's just go to a lesson here. This is lesson 50. So you can see here, they have the concept that you're practicing, the objectives, and some different teaching tips. It will also tell you if you wanna use something like a manipulative. So for example, this is saying use flashcards. Um, get out some place value materials. So it does have that for you. Okay, so you can see in here that they have you do a test and then continue on with a worksheet. I have not done that. Their test looks just like the actual lessons. So, and I mean, they just come right in the book in order. So I did not do a test and a lesson on the same day. You can see they, I, we just float them in just like a lesson. And I even skipped problems in a test as well. So. Let's skip down to their direction so you can kind of see the guidance that it gives you. Here's a description of the what you need to be doing for student activity one. It kind of tells you how to introduce it. It might tell you how to um, give an example and then here it is in the book. So it does guide you in that way. There are some times where, here's an example, lesson 51. They want you to do all of these problems here. Here's lesson 51 and the back side of it. And then they also want you to do this addition and subtraction drill sheet. So they do tell you when to use the extra drill sheets. I have never used them. Here are the answer guides. This is another kind of bummer. I didn't mention this. The answer guides are on a different page than the actual lesson. So if you, you can use this to follow the lesson, but if you want the answers, you have to flip to the back and find it. They are just here all together. Let's look at the worksheets that they give you. You know, could these be helpful if you need an extra practice with a skill like telling time? Sure, they could be helpful, but I don't think they're that necessary. So just so you know, this is back here. I'm, I'm flipping a few pages at a time. Lots of, here's some of the algebra practice, measuring shapes, or that symmetry, excuse me. So these are here if you need extra practice. I hope that gives you a good idea of what Horizons Math 2 is all about. You know, every family is different. What works for me might not work for you and vice versa. Something that works for great for one child in your home might not work great for another child in your home. And I've learned that in my homeschool journey. So, you know, the reason I make these videos though is sometimes it's nice to hear somebody else's experience. How is it working for them? What are they doing to adjust and make it work for their family? And that's what I hope to do for you here. You know, every year I'm tempted to switch Horizons because there's always something that bothers me about it. But I realize if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it really does work for us. The things that bother me, I can fix, I can adjust, I can take out some problems, I can skip around as I need to. I don't have to use the extra worksheets in the teacher book. So all of those things that I count as a negative, there's ways for me to adjust and make the curriculum work for me. So we do plan to use this for third grade. I already have the books um, for our third grade year and we are looking forward to continuing with that. If you have questions about Horizons Math, 
feel free to leave it in the comment section. I will do the best that I can to answer it based on our own experiences. If this video was helpful for you, I would love to know that. I love hearing all stories when you share with me um, something that we can relate to. It's just so nice to connect with other homeschool moms on here or potential homeschool moms or maybe just parents looking to um, work on something with their children. So thanks for being here and thanks for your support.